Hello, my name is Bree from 1134 Press, where we share bookmaking, journaling, and papercraft inspiration to help you document your life. And today we are making a junk journal kit for a themed junk journal. So this is the second episode in this series where I'm creating a junk journal from start to finish. It's a themed one and I'm calling it the Almanac Diary. In the first episode of the series, uh, we went shopping. Um, so I showed you guys how I plan and shop to create a themed junk journal. So in this video, I wanted to show you how I put together a junk journal kit. And now that we have all of the materials and accoutrement that we will need to make our project, let's talk about what a junk journal kit is and why you should make one. Junk journal kits consist of supplies that you will need for binding or constructing your journal or for actually using your journal. Journal kits are essential if you suffer from shiny new object syndrome like me and if you get overwhelmed easily when you're presented with too many options. Kits are great at helping you stay on theme and they will also help you maintain a consistent aesthetic throughout your journal as you're working on it throughout the months or years, depending on what you want out of your journal. And if you are new to the magical world of junk journaling and creative journaling, I highly recommend you watch my series about finding your style. In this series, I talk a lot about aesthetics and cultivating a visual voice through our craft. So I highly recommend watching that playlist. Consider it a prerequisite to this series that I'm making now. So there are two different kinds of kits that you can create. There are kits for actually constructing and building a journal, and then there's kits for collaging and actively using your journal. Depending on what you need from your kit will determine what kind of supplies that you put inside of it. But today I am focusing on creating a kit specifically for embellishment and for actively using my journal. So the main things that go inside of a journal kit are papers, ephemera, stickers, washi, stamps, and texture. And this is not to say that everything that you put inside of your kit are the only things that you can use within your journals, although that would make for a really interesting creative prompt. But the things that you put inside of your kit share some kind of commonality, which will help link each page to the next um, where they'll share some kind of visual connective tissue. And before I show you my process of how I put together a journal kit, I would like to make special mention that you don't have to create a kit from scratch. You can actually go online and find a kit that another person has already put together that matches the aesthetic or has things in there that you want and then build off of that kit, which is why I'm happy to say that today's video is sponsored by Unbound and Upcycled. Unbound and Upcycled is a black woman and artist owned shop on Etsy that curates unique supplies and vintage materials specifically for creative journalers and mixed media artists. Luckily for us, new journal kits are launching May 15th with themes of summer and travel, as well as theme kits that feature black travel and leisure. Summer is coming, tickets and reservations are being booked. Right now is the perfect time to prep a vacation themed journal. So check out the links to Unbound and Upcycled below and let's support a member of our community by ordering some vintage supplies. Now onward to making the kit. When I'm choosing elements for my kit, I like to start with the material that I journal the most with. That might be stamps or stickers for you, but for me it's papers and ephemera. The material that you choose as your primary material is what sets the tone for the rest of the pieces that you choose for your kit. My papers include scrappy bits of aged papers, vintage ledgers and forms, some book pages, and so forth. The theme or purpose of my almanac diary is to track the passage of time by way of how I spend my days. The motifs of time, money, and record keeping are strong and clear in the paper and ephemera that I choose, even before I start journaling and using the materials. 
I like to consider this step of the journaling process as a sketch or a loose first draft of the story I want to tell. I would also like to mention that I made downloadable PDFs of some of my vintage ephemera collection that are available to members and supporters on Buy Me A Coffee. Links to that are in the description and cards if you'd like to check it out and support the channel in that way. Something to also consider when choosing papers is to think about including papers for printing and crafts. For example, I added book pages from a play because I wanted to cut out bits of dialogue to collage with. I also picked up a paper pad with neutral colors for printing and sticker paper just in case I wanted to turn a printable into a sticker. These quote unquote utility papers are great to have in case you become bored with the materials in your kit and want to create something new. The point of a kit is to make the journaling process easy and accessible. It drives me crazy when I'm spending time searching for things in my craft room when I really want to just go on and collage on my pages. Planning ahead will make that possible. I kept my selection of stickers, washi, and texture to a minimum. I'm intending for the driving artistic force for this theme journal to be about the writing, so I opted for minimal embellishments. But I did kind of go all out with my selection of stamps to counter this. Understanding the theme and vibe that you want for your journal will help make these decisions easy. And you can always edit your kit as you make and collage. A good practice after you've picked out the materials for your kit is to do a test page. Collage with some of the materials and see how they work together. You may find that some things don't don't really pair well together or that you might be missing something that could elevate your pages. And I like to remind you that every step of this process is supposed to be fun, an opportunity for intentional thinking and creativity, and everything that I suggest in this video are meant to help you execute exactly the thing you want for your journal. Thank you again for joining me for another video um, in my process of putting together this journal. I want to see what your kits look like. If you are also making a themed journal, share pictures of what you have going on on your desk, on our Facebook group, a craft room of our own. Links to our group are in the description below, of course. And don't forget to check out Unbound Upcycle, the sponsor of our video today. Very cool shop. Uh, Kelly is also on Instagram if you would like some daily dosages of creative inspiration on what you can do with the products that she sells in her shop. Also, you can support the channel by, you know, liking and subscribing. Uh, we also are on Buy Me A Coffee where I'll post super secret blogs, <laughs> um, which I'm sharing the kind of behind the scenes and thought processes of what I'm doing in my journal, not in front of camera. And there's also some downloadable files that I've made for this Almanac project that I've been slowly building up to executing this year. I can't believe it's May already. Yeah, and also special shout out to the members on Buy Me A Coffee. Thank you so much for your support in my shenanigans <laughs> on here. So I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.